surviving a meeting. You know, all of us go to meetings. Alice and I have already had two meetings today, and this is our third one. Um, it seems like everybody goes through meetings, and, and uh, so you go, God, I should have plenty of. Unfortunately, we, we learned the wrong way to do meetings because we've watched it all the people when they do it wrong. So we're gonna talk about some things to think about as you put a meeting together that maybe help avoid some of the landmines that you might get. Um, and, and this is what I always think about, you know, people love meetings, you know, you know let's, let's put another meeting together that will solve the problem. If you don't have a real purpose for doing a meeting, don't do a meeting. If there's no reason to meet, if there's a standing meeting every month and there's not a reason to meet, don't meet. People don't want to go to another meeting. They don't want to do another Zoom. So, you know, be aware of, of who you're working with in your audience. And it's kind of like, yes, meetings solve a lot and do an awful lot. Be efficient with them um, because just having another meeting will not guarantee. What it will guarantee is if it's a fa failure, you probably have people that won't come back. And, and that's the downside of it. So we're gonna start off, you're in charge of a meeting. Well, what do you have to do? When you attended a meeting, it was awful. You can see these people are not very excited about being in this meeting. What made it so awful? Why did you have, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll maybe catch some comments here. What made it um, a poor meeting? Anybody wanna speak up? God, you've all been through no meetings. agenda. No agenda. Oh gosh, yes. Um, and if I don't say this, I'll say it now. I no longer will go to a meeting if there's no agenda because it just tends to meander like a steam back and forth and goes long. Um, we used to have staff meetings in a county, and I wasn't in charge of them. Um, they used to go two and a half hours to three hours long. They were painful. Uh, and uh, we finally got them down to about an hour. Um, meetings are fine, but it's not a time to meet. It's not a time to get together. Do that after the meeting, do that. And it's important, that's important time, but that's not what meetings are about. So- Staying on point. <laughs> yeah, I have a tough time doing that. That's why I have PowerPoint to keep me on track. Um, really good. So what made meetings awful and, uh, if you attended more meetings, what made it awful? Well, unprepared for audience. We had people that had, they had called a meeting and they had a small room for 30 people. 200 people showed up. If you really want angry people to show up and stand in the hallways and everything like that, all you do is make them more angry. And so um, fortunately the people that were there made allowances, it was at a high school, opened up the high school gym and everybody got to see. At least it helped calm things down a little bit. Um, stacked audience wanted to vote. You had all these people who showed up and they were gonna, they didn't like a proposal. They were gonna shove it down the board's throat. They were gonna have the proposal and they were gonna pass it. It wasn't on the agenda. Nobody knew it was coming up. You just had a group of people that were gonna push it through. Um, or you had a hostile audience that took over a meeting. I've been there before where a person comes up and just, oh my gosh, it's, it becomes their meeting instead of the others. And again, as a facilitator, it's your role to control that. And it's tough to do. It's really tough to do. I'm not gonna talk so much about conflict in a, in a way that's really its own title, but I am gonna talk uh, about things you can do to, to keep control of meetings. And a community, a committee leader that had no idea what they were doing. Um, I became part of a committee and it was time they elected somebody president. She was a very nice lady and she didn't even know how to open the meeting. She didn't know how to, she didn't know anything. And she was willing, not willing to take uh, the reins of the meeting. And after two meetings of painfully sitting through those um, 45 minute meetings that lasted an hour and a half to two hours, I called the, the person that had, um, that was kind of overseeing the group. And I said, you know, I would be happy to work with this person and give them some ideas on how to run a meeting um, because I said, this is painful. You know, and, it, and it's, there's three kinds of people. Those that make things happen, those who watch things happen, and the tough ones are those that wonder what happened. 
no idea what they're doing. And, and speak up, talk about some things because meetings, as meetings go poor and poor, what you do is you lose people and they won't come back. I really like this. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. We're all, you know, why do we prepare for meeting? 90% of the meetings go well, but you'll get that meeting where you had no idea that something was going to happen. Um, the commissioners called the meeting to talk about um, septic tanks, and they were going to propose that septic tanks be inspected for a fee of $150. Somebody found out about it, called people up, and they had 300 people in the meeting room. The meeting that was supposed to last 45 minutes went till three o'clock in the afternoon. It started at 10 o'clock because they needed to listen to all that testimony. Always be aware for line lines. They happen. So who's in charge of the meeting? All kinds of people. The boss sometimes is in charge, the president, the facilitator, the leader, administrator, convener. There's all kinds of people. A lot of times it's the person that says, I call the meeting, I'm in charge. Sometimes they're the worst ones to have in charge of a meeting. But um, I'm going to go with you're facilitating the meeting um, and you're the facilitator. Maybe that you're not necessarily the one that called it, but as a facilitator, that's a really good role to be in. in. And uh, the person is actually doing the meeting and conducting it. So what does a facilitator do? Facilitator leads the group through a process that allows the participants to focus. Again, leads them through a process. There's lots of processes out there. And, and sometimes it's a matter of going, okay, where does this group need to go? As a facilitator, I'm not interested in where the group ends up. That's not my point. I'm not there to make them decide this is what I want them to do. My group, my process is to take them through a process so that everybody feels they've had a voice to be heard and they feel that it was a fair process. They may not necessarily agree and it focuses on the issues. Art talked about lack of focus, running around, focusing on the issue, keep people coming back, not keep bogging down and things like that. So what is the role? First of all, be prepared before the meeting. There's lots of things you can do before the meeting to get ready for it. Know where you're meeting, what is there, what is not there, where are the light switches, where does it have Wi-Fi, those things, where are the restrooms at? People are going to ask you those questions. And so know what's going on. I had a, a good friend, and she was asked to facilitate a meeting. The president of this club was having a lot of trouble getting to a point. She said, could you come in and facilitate it? She said, sure. So she went in the meeting, and she'd never been in a more hostile environment in her, in her life. It was horrible. She finds out after the meeting that the president was the only one that wanted the facilitator there. The rest of the board didn't want a facilitator there. And so when this lady came in, unbeknownst, she was already stepping on landmines. So think about what's going on. What's the room? Confidentiality, different things like that. Um, had another person that facilitated the meeting, and he knew it was going to get hostile. So he had the sheriff showing up in full uniform with a gun. And he just stood in the back of the room. And it was a very well-preserved meeting. Didn't, Sheriff didn't introduce himself or anything. He was just there. But uh, the fact that it, his presence helped keep things calm. Know who, what the audience is. Know if it's, if it's going to get tough, if it's going to get violent. You know, what are people want to know? If there's questions that are going to come up. Maybe you could have people invited there, not that they're speaking, but they could be there to help answer questions. Understand it's working together, serve, serves the group. The facilitator is trying to get the group, and that means everybody in the group, working together to come up. If you have one person make all the decisions, what you're going to find is people are going to grumble, they're going to be in the background, and you're going to wind up doing the process again. So make sure it's as a group when things get bad. Set ground rules. I cannot tell you how important ground rules are. And this is my set of ground rules. If I'm gonna have one meeting and I know there's gonna be some contentions and things like that, I will pass ground rules out or I will have them on the board. If I have a 10 week meeting, so we're gonna decide the county 
um, land use rules or things like that. And that group is going to be me for a long time. Then I'd like the group to establish the ground rules. They're probably going to come up with something like this. But if I don't want to waste time doing ground rules if I'm only going to meet once. But if it's going to be something over time, you want those people to have a stake in it. And if all of them agree this is the ground rules, you can come back to that. And that's a point to say, wait a second, no personal attacks. Or, hey, we agreed that everybody's ideas count, those type of things. Um, and, and it's something you can use as kind of an anchor, especially if you have some strong personalities to help control them and say, you agreed with this, this is what we need to do. One of the most for, important things as a facilitator, especially when I come on at annual, is a, a facilitator needs to be neutral. That means I don't side with anybody's issues. I just wanna see something happen. When you remain neutral, that really gives you a position of power. And I see Jerry there and I see Alice. So Alice has made a proposal and Jerry just doesn't agree with it. Um, the fact that if, if Jerry knows that I side with Alice and really like Alice's position, he's not gonna feel that I'm running the meeting and I'm not being fair. But if I remain neutral, if I'm neutral, then Jerry may not agree with Alice. He may not necessarily agree how things are going, but he at least will respect the process and respect that I'm giving everybody the right, no matter what the decision is made. So see that everybody participates. That's really tough to do. If I got 50 people in a room, I cannot make everybody participate. But if I've got people that are key people, you know, Jane in the back of the room is just, she's just a quiet person. Halfway through, I may say, Jane, you know, do you, do you have any views on this or things like that? Making sure that everybody has a chance to participate. And there's some ways to do that. Sometimes breaking people up into small groups, letting the groups come up with ideas, feedback, and do it that way so that everybody participates. And sometimes when you have a small group, you can't hide. You can do that with breakout rooms in Zoom. So if you've got only two or three people, you just about have to say something. Versus 50 people, it's real easy to hide in that room. Moving through the agenda and staying things on focus. It's amazing how groups, especially groups that get together a month, and they want to talk about recipes or my 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 daughter's um, or my daughter had a baby and this and that those different things getting off point and sometimes it's okay to get off point but when it keeps happening and happening what happens is we tend to set the most important things at the end of the meeting and we've used up all this time for these small items and it's like okay we have five minutes to get through this we need to take a vote on this no discussion that's not the right way to do that. That should be tabled and go to the next meeting. But, but again, sometimes you can't do that. Put your most important things first so they get done and you have the time to talk through them. But keep the group on focus. And you do that with an agenda. You know, we were taught, you know, we, we've gotten a little bit off, off guard here, um, off track here. We need to get back to this issue on the garden and if we have the right to chop down these trees or, or not. Um, we've moved on beyond that. There's times where there's going to be conflict. Conflict happens, and that's that's okay. You can see that somebody disagrees with somebody up front on this one. It's okay to have that. We want to make sure it's okay to understand that I may not agree with you. That's okay. But I don't have the right to attack you. So Nancy comes up with a differing view. I have the right to disagree with Nancy but I don't have the right to attack Nancy. And that's, the re and that's really important for the facilitator to say, hey, we're not here to attack the person. You wanna talk about the ideas, that's fine. You have the right to do that. And always know that if things get out of control and you can see them go that way, sometimes a break is good, sometimes you need to end the meeting. You're not gonna accomplish anything once it's out of control. That's not gonna happen. And there's times where you can be, you know, it's a disservice. Wait a second, we're all here. We've come to this meeting and you're canceling it. You know it's going south. And it's going to get to the point where emotions are going to rule. Um, never be afraid to say, or take a long break. Let people go out and say, okay, go talk to the person that's angry. Say, okay, you're upset. What can we do to make you feel better about what's going on? 
know, there's things you can do that way. Understand time, you know, and help the group reach their goals in the time allotted. If you said this meeting's ending at 3.30, at 3.31, everybody's looking at that clock. They're out of there. Um, and, and that means starting on time. I went to a meeting three months ago and I haven't been back and I just won't go back. Um, the meeting was supposed to start at three o'clock. It was supposed to start at four and they moved the meeting to three. I showed up at three o'clock. One of the committee members wasn't there out of the nine of us. The facilitator waited us for 45 minutes so they could show up. And the meeting then started at four o'clock and we went to five o'clock. I had other things going on. You know, time is really important. If you don't have a, a time set, but understand that there are people that have agendas and they've set the meetings. And if you're not gonna commit to that, what will happen is people won't come back to your meeting. You said we were done at four, the meeting went five minutes late, that's fine. Or ask the group, you know, it's, it's four o'clock right now. I know we said we'd end at four. Is it okay with the group if we go another half an hour because we can finish this and not come back to it? People are okay with that too, but ask the group, make sure that people are okay with it. You know, future meeting gates, make sure that you set those. You know, I usually know that if it's a standing meeting, I check back with the group and go, okay, next month we're meeting on the, the second Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Everybody's aware of that. And this is the date. Maybe it's a holiday. Maybe there's something else going on and it needs to be brought up. Um, meetings, need to, meetings need to have information. Now, sometimes we don't have meeting minutes because people will read back over those. Um, it's really nice with Zoom because we can forward those. But if there's any actions, if any motions or things like that, if I'm not taking minutes, sometimes I at least will note and say, if there's any actions or things like that, then I'll, I'll make sure I've noted those. If there's something going to be done, so I'll pick on Alice again. I like picking on Alice. Alice said that she would check in to see if we could get a load of chips delivered at the office. I'm going to put her name on that action so that she knows that. So that next month, when that comes up on the agenda, she can see she's going to have to report on that. So the day before, she's going to call on that. So we want to make sure that that happens. <coughs> What's the steps for next meeting? What are, what are some things that we have to call? And, and asking for agenda items from people is always really nice. I always like to ask for agenda items. Get them to me by this date, and I'll make sure they're included. doesn't mean they can't be asked at the meeting, but that really really officially, if you're doing a meeting and it's not on the agenda, a lot of times, unless people are disagreement, it's not fair to do motions. And so Jerry sees that, you know, we're not talking about membership or anything like that. And he's really busy, so he can't make the meeting. Um, I'm picking on people that I know. All of a sudden, somebody at the meeting brings up this really important thing about membership that Jerry would have liked to have been there for. He didn't see it on the agenda. And so something's being voted on and he didn't attend because it wasn't there. It's really important to make sure that, that when it reflects in the agenda, if you're going to be voting on important things, not having those is a disservice to people. So be prepared. What does that mean? That means if I'm gonna do some things, I may have to have markers. I may have to have a chalkboard. I may have to have a, a flip sheet, different things like that. Um, follow through. I'm letting, making sure that people knew about the meeting. As soon as that meeting is over, usually the next one's already been announced. I will send it out to everybody by email saying, this is the date. I don't have to have an agenda. I'm just letting people know, this is the date. You're aware that the next month we're having it on this time. Make sure that there's active communication with all members so they know what's going on. And, and see where you're going. What if, what's happening in terms of the big picture? So where is the group going? They need to know that. You need to be able to multitask because things change. Respect other people's agendas. People will come with other agendas. That's okay. I respect that. That doesn't mean I have to fulfill that agenda, but I need to at least acknowledge it. And a desire to achieve results. Having, a, having six or seven meetings in a row and not getting any results, it won't be long. You won't get people to come to a meeting. People come to the meetings and spend their time because something is happening. 
And if nothing happens, I'm not going to come back. So running the meeting. How do we actually run the meeting? Any questions up till now? And I'm going to look through the chat box. The Zoom link is on every entry. Haven't seen October yet. Okay. I don't see any questions, so I'm going to move on. Running the meeting. Okay. What makes a good meeting? I had an exercise for this. I'm just going to. What makes, what makes a good meeting? You go through and let people talk about it, but I'm just gonna move into this part. So before the meeting, know what the group is, anticipate, especially if you've been asked to facilitate it and you're not really aware. Know who's, who the players are, who's the strong points. If there's some people, anticipate problems and things like that, prep, know where you're meeting. You know, where's the light switches off? Where's the plugins for different things like that? Um, those are already, you know, if you're going to the same meeting room, that's great. But what if you have to go to a new place? Know those things ahead of time, because that could be a real disruption. You show up, you need to show a PowerPoint, and you can't find the Wi-Fi. It takes you 20 minutes. The meeting's 20 minutes late because of that. That's a, that's a problem. You know, okay, you started the meeting. We're going to go ahead and, and you've announced the meeting. You'll start it. You work through the agenda, work through the work. And then afterwards, I'm going to let everybody know, okay, the meeting's done. Thank you all for coming. These are the reports. This is I'll, a lot of times at the end of the meeting, I'll summarize and say, Nancy said she would do this, and Kay said she would do this, and Roman said she would do this for the next meeting. I really appreciate you guys following up on that. I'll make sure that I send that out, sending minutes out there, sending any reports, things like that. If I said I would do something, I'm writing notes to myself during the time so that I can get on top of that real quick. Agenda. And agendas can be different things. They can work for you. Everybody needs to have an agenda and they need to have it the day before the meeting. I have a person that used to send the meeting agenda out the day of the meeting. That's too late for me. I've already made the decision. I'm probably not going to go because I didn't see the agenda. Or I made a commitment and I really wanted to be there now because I see. If you have people that meander a lot, the group gets off task this time. So that means the meeting starts at 10 o'clock. At 10.10, we're going to do our first business. The set At 10.20, we're going to do old business. At 10.30, we're going to do new business. You don't have to stick with it during the meeting, but if people get really off track, you go, you go, you know, we've taken up the 10 minutes and we're really getting into this. I really want to tackle this other subject. So you don't have to list times, but if you list times, be sure and do that. Um, introductions. Introductions aren't necessarily if you're meeting once or if everybody kind of knows everybody. But if it's the first time meeting, plan on taking a half an hour, 45 minutes to give introductions. It's going to take a while. If you have 20 people and each one takes one minute, which isn't very long, you're already in the, in the meeting 20 minutes. If the group is meeting for the next 10 weeks, introductions are really important. Who gets a chance to speak? Is there, a, you know, can anybody speak? Um, do you need to raise your hand so that you can be acknowledged? Different things like that. Is there a process to who speaks? Because there are people that will just speak up, but there's always that shy person that really wants to say something and you kind of see them raise their hand or you can kind of see the look on their face and they just get left behind. As a facilitator, you need to keep control of that. Make sure the topics that you're gonna, you know, what topics are you gonna discuss and why do you need an agenda? Because you're gonna meet goals. Put your most agenda, your best agenda items first. Um, keep on task, especially if you have a group using that agenda to keep them. And if you said you were going to be done at eight o'clock, be done at eight o'clock. You don't have to give a final time if it's not important. Um, but if it's important to be done at a certain time, let's say your meeting meets between 12 and one and people have to get back to work. So at 1255, people are leaving that room, whether or not you're done. Make sure you keep on task. Keep the people part of the process. Talk to people. Make sure they're engaged. It's not about you talking the whole time. Make sure everybody's engaged, everybody's working and everything, and that one person's not dominated, and that the group knows where it's going. We're here today because we want to put together a playground for the school, and we're here to fundraise for that. That's why we're here, okay? Then everybody knows it, and when you get off track, let's bring them back. Introductions, minutes of financial, committee reports, old business, new business, 
assignments, deadlines, action items, set the next meeting date. It can be a simple agenda like that. And you even can, I've even had some, I like to do committee reports. Um, and the reason I like committee reports is because it moves things along and helps keep track of what's going on. And I find a lot of times with the committee reports, I don't have to worry about old and new business. It already has come up. It already takes care of some of the assignments, but it just, it just depends on how you want it. But have a process. Let people know the date, the place, especially if it's moved, where you're meeting at, the time and the length. And again, if you announce a starting time, if you're starting at noon, start at noon. If somebody's late, that's their fault. But if you're always, we had a guy that was always late for our meetings, always a half an hour late. Our meetings were, it was dairymen. I met with a group of dairymen. We would start at eight o'clock at night. He'd show up about 20, 25 after. So I finally said, you know, could we start at 8.30? Because we're always starting late. Could we start at 8.30 and everybody will be there? Everybody thought that was a great idea. And you already know what happened. He was still 20 minutes late. He wasn't getting there until almost nine o'clock. I don't reward people that are late. They need to make up that time and don't go back. It's their fault they were late. I mean, things happen and I understand that. And you can catch them up at the break or things like that if it happens. But you know people that are habitually late. Again, don't reward them and don't penalize the people that were on time. Know your facilities. We talked about where are the plugins at, where are the light switch at, where are the restrooms at, are the doors locked? You know, if something happens, how do you get out of this building? Those type of things. Just if you've never been there before, take a walkthrough, know what's going on. Is there a blackboard? Is there a way to plug into equipment? How many chairs do you have? You got 40 people in 10 chairs. You're not going to have a, a, a very happy people. You know, is internet, lights, and, and the size of the room. Most of you as master gardeners in Calais County know we had a meeting room in our office and it wasn't long before we had, outdid that. We had people everywhere. We had people standing and it was because the meetings became so popular. That's great. We changed the meeting room to a bigger one and went someplace else because we wanted everybody to be able to be comfortable, sit down and relax. Um, you know, there are times, one time, but if you're going to consistently not have room for people that they're, and they all need to be at the table. Everybody needs to be a part of the meeting. If, they're, if they were there to show up, then they're important enough to be part of that meeting. And room arrangements. Room arrangements are really important. You see one at the bottom. That's not the way you have a meeting, unless you have lots of people. But that's a more of a lecture type of thing. The horseshoe, I really like the horseshoe, which is on the left side, where if I'm teaching, everybody sees everybody. I can have people talk. I can have people interact and things like that. Works with a small group. If I'm going to break people up into small groups, the meeting with the, the tables and the red cloth works good. I've automatically made people be in small groups. And so that works well. I can also put a balloon on each table that has a different color on it. And as people come in, I, I give them a magic marker that has different colors. They have to go to the room with the balloon. So that keeps people even more broke up. There's all kinds of ways to do that that's really easy. Or have people pick up pencils as they come in and they pick up different colors and all of a sudden they find out they have to sit at that table. So that you get a little bit of mixing action and everything like that. So uh, for a lot of meetings, the first thing I'll do is go in and change the room because I can have that room reflect on what I want and what I want that group to accomplish. If I want to make sure everybody's talking, the small groups, that's going to happen because they're already talking amongst themselves. They're already in small groups. If I want everybody to face each other, the horseshoe works really good. So people can see everybody. Prepare for technical difficulties. It's going to happen. I had a presentation that I had all, I had worked hours on this presentation and it was to facilitate a group. I got there and my projection unit blew a bulb. I was dead in the water. And so I winged it. Um, and I was okay with that. But machines will go out. I was also at one meeting and the power went out in the building. No lights, no windows. Meeting was over. You know, those type of things happen. And so plan, you know, in your mind, what if, if something doesn't go right? 
have it happen. Um, Roxanne, who is a master gardener, a couple of weeks ago showed up with her PowerPoint. We plugged it in the computer. She brought the wrong PowerPoint, didn't have her presentation, but she brought all her notes with her. She gave an outstanding presentation, did an outstanding job because she had her notes and was prepared if, if something went wrong. And it did. Icebreakers. Oh, icebreakers are not, you know, if you're only going to have one group meet once, icebreakers are okay, but you don't necessarily need them. But if I'm meeting a group and I've got 20 people, nobody knows everybody, maybe doing an icebreaker besides introductions, icebreakers kind of getting people so they find, um, for an example, these people in a circle and everybody's sitting in a chair in a circle and you go, um, how many people have cats? Everybody has to have a cat, has to stand up and move to a different chair. Well, there's one less chair. And so whoever gets caught, caught in the middle, they have to. How many of you been, how many has been to Disneyland? Everybody has been to Disneyland stands up. Um, everybody that has a family, then you get a lot of people. Everybody that has dogs. And people start to see commonality. Oh, I didn't know she had cats. I didn't know they'd been to Disneyland. I love Disneyland. I, you know, and people that don't know a lot about each other, because it's pretty safe, all of a sudden find out different things about others and um, it establishes that commonality. Refreshments or meals? Oh man, refreshments and meals are great if you can provide them, especially snacks. You do snacks and people will remember the snacks or not snacks, or can they eat there? Um, if we have a lunch meeting, can people bring their own lunch? Um, or do I give time for people to go out? Um, having snacks, it just it keeps the energy up. You know, if energy is weaning, I'm going to call a break. People go out there and they have a, a cookie with raisins in it or, or even M&Ms on it and that type of thing. They come back, their energy is going to be higher. They've got some coffee in them. All of a sudden, we're going to see renewed energy coming back. So breaks are a good way to do that. Having name tags for everybody. If nobody, people don't know each other, name tags are a really good way to do that. Um, you know, uh, supplies, if people need pencils, if they need paper, different things like that. Um, I saw one lady and she just, she had all these pipe cleaners and she have handfuls and she just spread them around the room. We're all going, what do we need pipe cleaners for? Some people just like to fiddle during the meeting. And what people would do is they were picking them up and they were making objects and everything. They were just, just to keep themselves with something to do. And they were playing with it. They weren't there for the meeting. They were just there to keep people something then, then they can do. Um, again, make sure that we focus on the common goals and that people know that. People will come with agendas and agendas for them. That's not what they're there for. They have their own personal agenda. I understand that, but we're there for the benefit of the organization. And we need to make sure that we adhere to that. Respect time, respect ideas. Everybody that has an idea needs to go on the board. It's amazing how many times people put forth an idea and it lends itself to another idea and to another idea. And that third idea is the one that everybody really likes. Respect time, respect ideas. That's important. My phone's ringing, just give me two more rings and then I'll go on. That's why I have answering machine. Length of discussion. There are some people that give them five minutes and they will take 20 minutes to explain it. Um, or, you know, Kay was talking about something and then Jerry Kay comes in and she talks about the same thing. And then Jerry talks about the same thing. You know, there's a point where the discussion is great, but we're not, we keep going around in a circle on the same subject. Let's make sure that we get to the point and make sure we acknowledge, okay, we all agree this is where we're at. Let's move on to the next thing. Leave personal feelings and agendas at the door. Um, we're there to work on it. Again, these are not attacks on people. We may disagree on ideas, that's okay. And I need to control that, but there can't be attacks on people. Taking a break, calling into the meeting, you know making sure that we acknowledge those things that right up front, we need to make sure that, and, and that that's not why we're meeting here. We're not meeting because of this. Robert rules of order. 
I can't say enough about Robert Rules of Order. Um, and, I, and I'll spray a little bit, but there is a parliamentarian, if you become an official parliamentarian that understands all the Robert's Rules of Order, to become certified, you have to take a three-day verbal test. Because I had a lady come in and she talked to people in the county about being Robert's Rules of Order. She became an official one because she would go to government meetings that she wasn't in control of that would go on for two and three hours. She started using Robert's Rules of Order to keep agenda items, stay on track and things like that. And she brought those meetings down to an hour. Robert Rules of Order just very simply can keep things. I had a person in a meeting and he kept interrupting because he, he would not like the idea that we came up with. So it's kind of like, where do you want to go to eat? I don't care. Well, how about Taco Bell? No. How about Applebee's? No. They know what they want. They don't know what they want. They know what they don't want. He couldn't verbalize what he wanted. He just didn't like this. That doesn't help you. You can't move on. And so I finally made the point, if you want to go back, you have to make a motion. Motion passed, um, the motion, the second, and then we can have discussion so that we know what we're talking about, not just sitting there thinking, okay, this is what we don't want, but we don't know what we want. And it was really just one person that was that way. Robert Rules of Order. You don't have to get really um, verbose or anything like that, but there's a few general Robert Rules of Order. It really will help keep you on track. Taking breaks, can't tell enough. The energy's weaning, people are tired. People are getting hostile. Somebody has an emotional problem. Call a break. Doesn't matter whether it's on the agenda or not. Call a break. Call a short one. There's no such thing as a five-minute break. You know that. People get out and they're going to meander and do this. So say, well, if you're going to call a break too, also give an ending time. We're going to meet back in five minutes. Know that it's going to be 10 minutes. Parking lot. Loud parking lot. So we're talking and talking and talking. And Art says, we need to talk about this. It's not on the agenda. It's really important. You know, Art, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure that planting apple trees in the demo garden is really important right now. We have some things we need to get. Let me put it here on this board up here. If we have time, we'll get to it later. If we don't have time, I'll make sure it gets on the next agenda. I haven't forgotten what Art wants to bring up. I've just put it off to the side so that we can either talk about it later or talk about it next time. Put things on the parking lot so that you don't get off track. Make sure that we have minutes taken. And summarize the outcome. What do you accomplish? Minutes should say, have a reflection of what you accomplished, where you're going. I think that's important. I'm going to go real quick through this part, but I think it's important to talk about process sometimes. So process, how do you vote? Majority vote, we have 10 people in the room, six vote, that's great. Decision by consensus, we're saying that everybody has to agree. That's a lot different than majority voting. Compromise, we're gonna try and come up with something that everybody likes. Mostly voting, we're gonna vote on this. Okay, we throw out a couple of things, we're gonna vote again. So there's different ways of voting. Make sure that everybody's clear on what voting really means. Brainstorming, that's a process. You write something out on a card, less than three, you know, several words per card, place it, and then what we're gonna do is, so everybody says, okay, we're just gonna come out with ideas. Come out with your ideas. Um, where's the best place to have the demo card? Everybody's writing down their ideas. When they're done writing them out, we put them on the, on the bulletin board, and then we can start to group them. So we just want to get a lot of ideas out there. Brainstorming will do that. Generates a lot of ideas. It gets a group started. They go, wow. You know, instead of getting bogged down, we want to talk about this or we talk about this. You know, if 10 people thought this was the best location, it's probably the first one to start with. Um, it includes everybody because everybody's cards up there. It's not controversial. Everybody's ideas are up there. And if you don't know the group, it's a good way to get started. So brainstorm is one technique. Card storm. Everybody, same thing. Individuals write um, what they want on the cards. And then you have people in the small group and they decide that as a small group, they decide what are the three most important things? What are the three most important cards out of that group? 
So I have three people together. Each of them came up with three ideas. So I have nine ideas. They're going to pick their top three. And that group will report that top three back to the group. And then I'll go through the groups. A lot of creativity builds consensus. If you have people that are silent or somebody that's bully that will push his way through, it, it takes care of that because it limits them to that small group. It builds a lot of trust and communication and it really will give you fast decisions. So all of a sudden I've taken all these ideas, I've melted them down to the top three for each group. And then you're gonna find that a lot of those three will match other people's three. And all of a sudden I've done, taken all these ideas and I've melted them down to one play. Nominal group, right? Ideas, down. you can tell, I, I, I like a lot of things on cards. So everybody writes their ideas down on cards. And then I go around the room and I say, okay, Kay, what was your idea? Then Nancy. And I keep going around the room until everybody's idea is on the list. Then once everybody's idea is on the list, so I got 36 things, I will have people come up and I will give them four dots. And they put the dot by the thing that they want to put on. Also let people know, can they put all four dots on the same one or do they have to vote for four separate things? That's important because I can stack the vote that way. Um, you also get people that will wait until some others have voted so they can see where it's going so they can see if they want to sway things. It's fun to watch people do that. It gets a group started, takes a very large group. I've done this with 50 or 60 people and we came down, took a two, it was an hour process and we came down from 36 ideas to the top four and were able to come up with those top four ideas and present those to the commissioners. And we did that in two hours. Limited budget, lots of ideas, a fast solution. It really comes down. And so we took the top four ideas because of the dots, and that's what we focused on as a group. Um, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Just a different way of looking at a problem. Um, it defines and prioritizes the issues, gives the organization the strengths, usually doesn't get very controversial, and it's a really good way to gather information from people in the room. Status quo. If we did nothing, what would happen? What are the consequences? Sometimes people don't know where they wanna go. Okay, let's do nothing. Well, as you know, doing nothing, something's gonna happen. And talk about what if we don't do anything, what would happen? Sometimes that will get people moving. So if a group can't get started, it gives a lot of, a, a, if it's established group, it gives a, a place for people to think about, okay, we're not gonna talk about what will happen. What if we don't do anything, what's gonna happen? Sometimes that will get people thinking about, okay, we need to do something. Problem definition. First, the group decides what the situation is, what they want to happen, and what is the problem or the barriers. A lot of times we think about the situation, but we don't think about what is causing us not to come up with a solution. What are some of the problems that we have? So define what the problem is so we know what it is. It really, especially for a group that's having a hard time starting, sometimes um, this will, will help to do that. If you have a bully, somebody that just dominates the conversation, this is a really good technique to use. And if you have a new group that's never really met together, sometimes this one's a really good one to help them work through it. Action planning. Put people in groups, different topics. So I've got four groups out there. One's a, and it's a community action. So one's going to talk about the health. One's going to talk about education. One's going to talk about civic duty, and then move people through the groups. So each person is gonna get a chance to talk about each one of those, but they're gonna do it as small groups. I know people hate groups because they go, I wanna be, I wanna hear what everybody says. But a lot of that is sometimes a control thing. And then report back what each of the groups have. One person, they're recording what everybody says, and then reports back to the group what, what happened. Um, Again, it gives you a written report, gives you a wide area of agreement. Um, and especially if there's little trust amongst all people, if there are different groups there from the community and they don't trust one another, this allows that to get out. So that's what I have for let's have a meeting. Any questions? <laughs>